Today's case doesn't involve us trying to solve a crime or figure out who the guilty party is. It is actually just to discuss the disgusting events that took place on one cold evening in February of 2022. And what I have to share with everyone is extremely gruesome and disturbing, so don't say I didn't warn you. Before we truly get into it, I think that we need to get this trash fire for human, at least their name, out of the way, because I can already sense a couple puns that are going to come out your mouth when I say her name. Me? Is it me? Let me introduce you to Taylor Shabiznis. <laughs> I better be good, girl. Taylor Shabiznis. Okay. Okay. You're not tempted to no, tell me to all. mind my shabiznis? <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen later on down the track, but for now... <laughs> but for right now, I'm going to shut up. I'm going to shut my mouth. All right. Well, Taylor she was... Shabiznis. She was born on November 11th, 1997 in Wisconsin in the USA. Oh. Yeah. She's a youngin. She's a youngin. She's 25. Sheet. Mm-hmm. I don't think I've heard of her. Normally I go through the subject matter's background, how they grew up, their family dynamics, etc. But for this crime, or at least as far as it's concerned, nothing could have contributed to the dark, twisted and bizarre crime that she would commit. And aside from putting an actual content advisory up, which we know I don't do anymore, I don't know any other way to let you know that you will need to hold on to your butts for today's case. What? You're thinking about your business? <laughs> Is it eating you inside? It is. Yeah. I just... you got to keep out of her business. <laughs> we told you it's going to uh, come later. You didn't wait very long. No. <laughs> I almost don't know where to start with today's case, but let's try this. On February 23rd, 2022, recent, Ooh. at 3.25 a.m., Officer Wainish was dispatched to a residence in the city of Green Bay, Brown County, Wisconsin, as a report was made of a grisly discovery in a bucket found in a basement. Was it a poop? Someone poop in the bucket? You're right. This case is about a turd. <laughs> this That's whole turd. case is about a single poop. <laughs> The mess they would discuss. <laughs> yeah. Ashley, oh. not a single shit was given. <laughs> the 911 call was made by one Steve Hendricks, who resided in the property with his girlfriend Tara Pakinich and her son Shad Therian. Like Chad with a sh Shat? No, stop. Shad. Be nice. Oh, okay. <laughs> so Tara was woken up sometime between 2 30 and 3 by the sound of a door slamming and a vehicle driving off. She knew that both Taylor and Shad had been over, so she assumed it was just them leaving until she noticed that the basement light was still on, which is where Shad had been staying. I don't know if he still lived with her. He was He's 24, uh -huh. but I don't know what the dealio is as far as that's concerned. Anyway, she went downstairs to check on him. And the room was empty. So she's like, oh, that's weird. And then she was going to turn the light off and then walk back upstairs until she noticed that there was like a bucket to like, I guess, the left of the stairs, which she's not familiar with it being there. This is her house. She knows her stuff. Yeah. Right? You'd know if there's and there's just like there. a towel and stuff sitting on it. So she lifted the towel from the bucket and saw her son's decapitated head. Oh. Well, she ran upstairs to tell Stephen, who was asleep, so she woke him up, and then he called the police. And I listened to, like, the 911 call, and he was, like, really confused mm. about what was happening. He even went down to kind of check it out, but he doesn't see very well, mm. and he was half asleep, so he didn't even know what he was looking at when mm. he looked in the bucket. But she was convinced that it looked like his head, so she thought it was his head, but she had no intention of ever going back down there and looking at it again. Yeah, fuck no. Because, like, why Why would you? And the thing that was really strange to me, and I was actually talking about it at work today, is that she did not seem upset, distraught, like nothing. I, I get that, you know, you, you could be in shock. Shock, yeah. But there are people who have not been, like, the parent of the presumed deceased yeah who have acted more grand mm. than she did so to me that was really strange i'm just gonna put it out there i don't think she was involved but it was weird yeah that's probably like my biggest fear a head like seeing a dead body yes but a decapitated head 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, see, I don't know. Like, just be yucky. We've spoken about it before. I I don't even think I could stomach looking at a, just a dead person, even if there was yeah. nothing wrong with like you know they're not missing anything. There's no guts or gore or anything. I would still. I don't think that would sit well with me. Yeah. That's something I don't deal well with. No, thank you. So what do we do? We have a podcast on dead people. Cool. <laughs> And there's even like one part in the call where I think they're asking him to elaborate or explain on what he means. And he said, she found the severed head of her son in the basement. This is what he told the dispatcher. There's yep. something in the goddamn bucket. Ugh. It's like, so, okay, yeah. An officer would be dispatched to the property because it's like, well, you've made this claim of a head in a bucket. Now we need to send someone because like, we need to corroborate that this is true. And if it is, then your property is an active crime scene. Uh. And we need to kind of figure out who the fuck, what happened, who is the actual victim, Yeah. who is the perp. So an officer gets there, the boyfriend, Steve Hendricks, opens the door, Yeah. Tara's there, she basically points them in direction of the stairs for the basement and then just again mentions something about the bucket and where it's found. And you have to, you have to watch it to tell me what you think because she, her behaviour is weird. Mm. Have a look, Because she wasn't distraught. She wasn't. I mean, yeah, she could be in shock, but like, if that were me, my behavior is not going to be as like, like it wasn't stoic. Yeah. Because you'd have like, you know, she's either going to be like super. Or if you've like shut down. Yeah. Yeah, and it wasn't that she was just very. It's over this way. Oh, I'm not going down. I'm not going to go look. But it's down there. You can find it in a bucket. There's a towel. On. Like it was just very. To me, it was a little bit, a little bit strange. Anyway, and this is all on body cam. So he has body cam on. So he goes downstairs. He has a look around. He can see like a pile of mattresses, like in the middle of the thing. There's, I'm not sure if it's rubbish or storage or whatever, but the stuff everywhere. And then he sees the bucket and he removes the towel and he confirms that there is in fact a decapitated human head inside the bucket. No. Yeah, but he would also testify in court later because I watched the actual court hearing and the testimonies even, I watched the whole thing. Yeah. And not only was there a head in the bucket, but he saw genitalia in the bucket. What? Yeah. Well, that's kind of what the lawyer said. What? Can you explain what you mean by that? By genitalia, he said, yes, I, I saw a severed penis and testicles in the bucket with the head. It also later come out that there were some kitchen knives that were in, like under there in some liquid. I think the liquid was probably like blood, I but I don't know. They didn't describe it. I don't have a penis, but that makes me feel uncomfortable down there. Ooh. Oh, that's far. It's true. They also saw like blood, like some dried blood and stuff over on the mattress that was like in the corner. And I'm pretty sure I read somewhere that they had lifted off because it was cut, like there are blankets just thrown on the bed. It looked relatively unassuming, but they lifted it up and there was more blood underneath the mattress and stuff. Oh, fuck my. But the extent of what took place during and after the event is probably enough to leave your mouth agape. So let's go back on what happened that fateful day leading up to the murder and then everything that kind of happened around it. So Taylor came over to the house and picked Shad up from his mom's yep. at around 9.30 p.m. on the 21st of February. Uh -huh. And she was accompanied by a friend. The three of them went back to an apartment to smoke some weed. So the good old devil's lettuce. They smoked some meth, as you do. Uh, and they injected trazodone, which is an antidepressant. What? I don't know what they're aiming for. Kids these days and their drugs. Yeah. What the fuck would antidepressants do? Oh my god, this bitch. We can research. I didn't. But was it one of those antidepressants that's also like a muscle relaxant? Like is what? Uh, do you know what I mean? Because some of them have that effect. Mm, yeah, that's weird. It's very strange. Taylor and Shad had a bit of a history. So Taylor and Shad had known each other since middle school. But I'm pretty sure it was probably only like more recently that their relationship had turned in to one that included sexual liaisons. So I don't think they were dating, but they're definitely at least, at least fuck buddies now. Okay. So Shabiznis was also married. What? And still is to a man named Warren. Warren Shabiznis <sighs> is his name. Fuck off. And he... I believe they actually got married in 2017 and they have a kid together. But he is incarcerated on conspiracy to sell meth. <sighs> but he also claims that that's it's a trumped up fake charge. It's, it's like fake news. Don't marry your dealer or have a kid with your dealer. Don't do it. Warren Shabiznis. Warren Shabiznis. Warren Shabiznis. What the, what the fuck? Like, 
he also knew about this because the things that she did was like public. Yeah. And even after that, he would speak out. Like I'm talking about after everything's out. So mm. you don't know the nature of stuff yet. You will figure that out. Yeah. Or you'll find that out. But he knew what had happened because it was in the media. Yeah. And he spoke out in support of his wife. He said that he understands that it's you know, very serious, the charges that are there. But she's a human and she has rights to... And she also has people that love her and she just needs the support, you know, like mentally. Oh my God, no. I don't know what has happened, but no. <laughs> You're about to. Anyway, that's enough of that chump. We're not really going to talk about him again. So she obviously had a piece on the side. I'm assuming that he, like if she didn't like pull the strings in that relationship, mm. And basically just say, like, look, you're locked up. I'm going to fuck who I'm going to fuck. You can't do shit about it. I'm going to do it. Because she does seem like the type. Yeah. Or if they just had an understanding. And he was like, I'm locked up. I can't do shit for you. Go out there and do your thing. Like, whatever. I don't know if that's the case. Either way, she was sleeping with Shad. And they had obviously slept together beforehand. Because I mentioned before, they're like, you know, fuck buddies. At yeah. least a little bit. Well, this time, Shad had allegedly come up with the idea to do choke play mm -hmm. and I think they had done similar things before I know that she had definitely done like manual choke play with like hands and stuff I don't know if it was performed on her or on someone else so he presented her with two dog choker chains one for her and one for him because they wanted to choke each other out okay that was their kinky play Mm -hmm. He lies down on his stomach on the bed and then she puts the dog collar around his neck, the choker chain, and it turns from a kink into something entirely darker. Mm -hmm. She pulled the chain so tight that he turns purple and he's coughing up blood, but she doesn't stop. She says during the interrogation that she blacked out at first. Honestly, this bitch is so thick. She choked him until he died, mind mm. you. It took about three to five minutes for him to pass away. Yeah, I was going to say, it takes a... She passed out mm -hmm. until she woke up again, choking the deceased man, sees what she's doing, and decides to keep going. The interrogator asked her at one point, like, well, if you saw that he was purple and coughing up blood, why didn't you stop? Mm. And her response was, well, I'd already come this far, so... What? I liked it. What? Yeah. She said, yeah, I liked it. Literal quote. The fuck? That's not all she would do. She told the detectives that she played with his lifeless body for two to three hours, which included performing fellatio on him and inserting a dildo into his anus and into his mouth. I believe it was the same dildo. Mm. She also confessed to performing oral on him while she was castrating him. Her words were, and I quote, and you can see it on the interrogation video. I was sucking and cutting at the same time. I liked it. I didn't know what to do. How about don't? What the fuck? Okay. Mm. Mm -hmm. I was just going to say, how do you go from choking someone out to castrating them? Let alone playing with their body. But like... And having sex with the deceased man. That's so fucked up. I guess she's on drugs though as well. But like, you know what I mean? Like, what the fuck? I didn't know that method... I know... I've heard... Actually, yeah, I heard from Justin, because he used to do meth a lot. <laughs> I heard really? from him. Yeah. I didn't know that. I think he used to do it when he lived in Sydney before he moved to Brisbane. Because oh. there was one night we went to the beat. He met this other cracky whore. Mm. They became friends and were talking about meth. Mm. A, a, like, methany spots methany, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, okay. So they sense. got a bond, and, and then this slut was talking about how she could literally masturbate for 12 hours solid. We just met her. And he's like, yeah, I know what you mean. I used to do that too, blah, 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 blah. So. What the fuck? And I'm leaving that in there. He's not my friend. It's like, uh, maybe it doesn't make you horny, but it doesn't make you a homicidal. No. Like killing. Necrophile. Yeah. Killing someone is one thing. Then inserting stuff. And then cutting off body parts. What the fuck? While fellatiating them. <sighs> it's really strange. Anyway. Yeah, well, same. <laughs> I <laughs> don't like it either, don't. I saw the crime scene. I'm probably going to Google it later too. You will. I will. And she stayed in the basement with the body all of Tuesday morning, all the way through till Tuesday evening. So the whole day, the mom wasn't home yet. They'd gone out somewhere the whole day. And it wasn't until Wednesday, like early morning that she decided that she was going to go up the stairs, grab some kitchen knives, bring them back down 
and start a cutting for real. The detectives would find parts of his body in cardboard boxes, in bags, in a bucket that I mentioned earlier. Um, And oh, there was also a crock pot box in the rear right hand side passenger seat in her car, which I think was his car, but she had kind of taken it sitting on top of laundry and that had like his leg in it. What the fuck is wrong with this woman? You know what I mean? Like it's one thing to like do something fucked up. But to be, like, sitting in a courtroom going, yeah, I liked it. What? Well, she didn't sit in the courtroom and say I liked it. Oh. This was from the interrogation. Oh, sorry. But, yeah, Yeah. like, still, that's what the fuck. In the courtroom, this bitch, like, you'll have to watch the stuff. Yeah. I I can't even do it justice by telling you what happened in the court. You have to watch it. She would kick herself at some point for forgetting the bucket. Because her plan originally was to cut him up into conveniently sized travel... Yeah. That sounds terrible. Yeah. But into convenient bite-sized pieces to take him with her. She also said at some point, have you ever loved something so much you just want to kill it? Like, that's apparently what she told the detectives about how she felt about him. I don't think that's the case. No. But that's what she said. No. And so that's what she kind of did until she got lazy. She got tired from doing all the cutting and stuff. That the only thing she actually took with her was the crockpot that had his leg in it. Everything else was left in the house. What the fuck? Including the knives. That, one of the detectives would say, because there was one, you know bread knives? The ones with the sharp points on the ends? Uh-huh. She had apparently worn the serrations down on that. They were blunted. <sighs> and I saw photos of it. It still has flesh and stuff attached to it. It was gnarly, man. Mm. I was even going to say, like, from listening to a lot of people do, like, autopsies and shit, it's not easy to pull apart a body. So to do it with... Ugh. A bread knife. Yeah, fucking it's hell. It's nuts. Guess where they found one of his feet? Shoved inside his rib cage. What? Yeah. She had cut it off and shoved it inside his rib cage. She had also fuck? filleted the skin and flesh off his back. What the fuck, this bitch? She was crazy. And, like, the thing is, I don't know if she was preparing to eat him i don't know that i don't know but what i can tell you is that she had an unnatural unhealthy obsession with jeffrey dharma you know the gay guy Mm. yeah yeah she even posed in a selfie she took um with another i think it was like a smart device or something by her with an image of him on it smiling in the selfie with him i think she had like the hots for him Oh. Little does she know that he was into men. Yeah. And boys. Um, well, that's not good. They were able to track her down. Yeah. At her residence. And they found the little minivan thing and saw the crockpot in the back seat. So you can see that on the body cam. Huh. They also believe that they saw little traces of blood in the snow because it was snowing. Yeah. Um, leading from the car to her house. Far out. Strangely... And it's not like just a house house. It's kind of like a, kind of like this. It's kind of like a block of units, units right? Yeah. But who just walks straight out the front door? Taylor, she business. <laughs> and the police like stop her and they're like, Taylor, she's like, yes. And they arrest her under suspicion of murder. So they don't know yet, but mm. they know the two had been together. That was his car. They tracked it to, you know, so it's kind of obvious that. Yeah. That would happen. And they saw that she had dried blood still in her hands she had a deep cut in her thumb so i think she slipped at some point and cut herself and you can make out on the sleeves that and it's a black hoodie Mm. but you can make out on the sleeves that there's dry blood and stuff on that too so you're literally caught red-handed and just so everyone knows you can actually find this all on youtube youtube has all of the footage it doesn't have any of the like super gruesome stuff yeah but it has all the footage and then while we're talking about youtube and footage don't forget to check us out on social media and follow this podcast on everywhere that is played. So you can find that at linktree forward slash one time histories. Thank you very much. Mm. 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 So she was taken into custody on the 23rd, right? So this now is spanning over three days. So we have the 21st. She went and picked him up. He dies on the 22nd. She's now arrested on the 23rd. Uh-huh. It just still doesn't feel like there's enough time between everything happening and for this guy to be mutilated the way he's been yeah. mutilated. To me, it's just really strange. Anyway, she was interrogated for hours and the videos are also online, so don't forget to check those out. She would be tried on three counts. Count one was first degree intentional homicide. Count two, mutilating a corpse. And count three, third degree sexual assault. And I thought that's 
str- strange. Like they don't have tampering with the corpse yeah. or tampering with the, you know. And I was like, the sexual assault thing. And then I read into it and it's because I'm not laughing. I'm not laughing. Ooh. But you can't get consent from a dead person. So it's sexual assault because you didn't consent what? to being huh. sexed. I thought there was like a whole thing on like necrophilia. You know what I mean? Like I thought there was... And there should be. So I'm wondering if her legal team somehow found a, found a way to a loophole. Yeah. To take it out of that. Yeah, wild. I don't know if the, the mention of penetrative sex came up. However, she did put something inside him. So could she not have been charged with sodomy? Yeah. Sodomizing the victim? Yeah. There are... There are many things that didn't really make a lot of sense. Yeah, shit. Given all the cases that we have looked at, to me it was just a little bit weird. In saying that though, this is like a new case in America. Yeah. So some things could be new. Maybe they do it differently in Wisconsin. Like I don't... Yeah. I don't actually know. Anyway, Taylor would plead not guilty under reasons of insanity. Obviously that's something they do a lot. Claiming that she received mental health treatment when she was in seventh grade. So when she was like 12, 13. Oh, story checks out. Yeah, Mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that she'd also been medicated for presumed ADHD. Mm. Presumed. Mm. And that's another question that I have. How can you get prescription meds for a presumption of Mm. ADHD? I don't think that's it. You can't get Ritalin because I think you have ADHD. Here, try this. It just, whatever. Mm. And she also has bipolar disorder and has suffered with a past of severe depression. So that basically just means that she is not culpable. Doesn't make you cut someone up and shove a foot in a rib cage and yeah. that, no, fuck. Yeah. And while Brown County Circuit Court Judge Thomas Walsh took that into consideration, he ruled out that she was not competent to stand trial. So he was like, nah, bitch. Like, you're a different kind of crazy. But you got this. But you knew (laughs) what you were doing. Yeah. And I really want you to... I was trying to find you links to send. Yeah. Because he's a really good judge. I like good judges. He's a really good judge. I like him. But, like, okay, this is, like, a personal opinion kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Like, while she was deemed fit to stand trial, something is absolutely off with this psycho right Mm -hmm. like a normal sane what is normal but a sane person doesn't do that but it doesn't mean that you didn't have an understanding or or a lack of control over what you're doing you knew what you were doing Mm. you just decided to keep doing it yeah i feel you can still be the term crazy but still know what you're doing well because don't they have that thing there's like criminally insane yeah I don't know. I think I have to research the, the oh, meaning the of it. So anyway, she was being represented. represented she was being represented. Re- <laughs> it's been a long day. She was being represented. Thank you. By attorney Quinn Jolly. Quinn. Which I kind of like the name Quinn. Medicine woman. Dr. Quinn, medicine woman. Thank you very much. Uh, whom is also Polish in real life too. You're oh, really? welcome. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know that. I watched her episode on Who Do You Think You Are? Mum used to always watch her. Dr. Quinn. She probably knew deep inside she was Pole just like her. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> okay. So she was being represented by attorney Quinn Jolly and she clearly had an issue with the way he was doing his job because he wanted to make a request to delay the jury trial. Probably something that they would all do to buy time. And she probably needed it so they could come up with like a good point of view. <laughs> How are we going to dig ourselves out of this one? Yeah. Yeah. And then boom, she elbows him in the face <gasps> what? in court Wait. in front of the judge. What? I thought you were yeah. just... No, I'm trying to tell my case. <laughs> she elbows... Her attorney in the face while she's chained, mind you, and then she tries to jump on him and attack him. Fucking what? Like, what the fuck? Yep. There's a video of it. Oh my God, this bitch. And like one of the courtroom offices, I don't know if it's the bailiff, but one of the courtroom offices, like, I mean, he's a fat lump. I don't mean to be mean, but I mean, I can say it. He's a fat lump. He, hmm, she's only five foot two. Mm. And like 130 pounds. Mm-hmm. He struggles 
to like actually restrain her. She's kicking around, she's kicking him off, she's pushing herself back. Huh. It takes another officer to come in to get her into like a corner yeah. to like just sit down and be calm. And in the middle of the chaos, the judge like empties the entire courtroom. Yeah. Because it did have some of her supporters, they're like family or something. Well. Yeah. But they had to empty it so they reset everything because she went nuts. What the fuck? Mm-hmm. I was not expecting that or any of this. Her attorney, I can't remember if it was a new one or an old one, either way. They tried a motion to exclude evidence of her Google searches mm. where she had been looking for Jeffrey Dahmer walking into courtroom sexy and Jeffrey Dahmer butt. Oh my God. Get better idols. Yeah. Yeah, she really liked Jeffrey Dahmer. What the fuck? I just, I got nothing. What the fuck? Anyway, as I was mentioning before, like in court, it's hard to explain. Like words can't describe her, just her. Yeah. In court. Like there are times that she would hear things and laugh. There were times that things would be said and she would literally be smiling. And it's like grim stuff and she's Mm. smiling about it. We're laughing about it. The jury would walk in and you know how it's like all rise and you have to stand, whatever, and and be respectful. And she would be like pulling face, just doing weird shit the whole time. One time she's even sitting there looking at the judge and then pretends to shoot him. What? Well, she's, she's fucking loco. (laughs) Is that too much you put? I'm sorry. I was like, she's like like, that bitch is loco crazy. Do it again. No, that, no, I like that. It. No, no, I'm not. Shut your mouth. No, now you're just making more for me to edit. Shut up. I'm leaving it in there. On July 27th, 2023, the jury took 30 minutes hmm. to decide that she did not suffer from any mental disease at the time the crime was committed. Her legal team tried to veto that and the judge sided with the decision. And he said, look, I've sat through all of this testimony. I do not believe that... Ms. Shabizness suffered from any mental disease at the time that this happened. Mm. I'm siding with the jury. That will stand. Yeah. So that's not going to happen. Taylor Shabizness was found guilty on all charges with bond revoked. Her sentencing, however, will not happen until 9.30 a.m. on September 26, 2023. Boom, bitch. How is that for recent? Fuck yeah. Fuck it hell. What the fuck, this crazy bitch. I need to go look at her. I need to look at the photos. I need to look at everything. Yeah, that was cooked. So thanks for listening to today's episode. Yeah, thanks a lot for that. We really appreciate you. And again, don't forget to follow us on social media and especially follow this podcast. And share it. Share with your friends. Be like, oh my God, I'm listening to this amazing podcast. You guys should go listen to it. Okay, you don't have to lie to them, but they should at least listen to this podcast. All right. Goodbye. Goodbye.